AFR On Demand is brought to you by Breck Golf. Try Beaver Creek today, just 20 minutes from downtown Baton Rouge in the Zachary area. They've got a PGA Tour driving range, a short game practice area, 30 to 40 yard practice shots. It's a great place to chip and putt and practice if you don't have time for a full round. Book your tee time today, golf.breck.org, golf.breck.org. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. Live from the Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge studio. Let's rock! And off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. It's AFR presented by Relief Windows. I'm Matt. Love you, Matt. Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. You so. And Mr. Toby Tumplay. All right, we're here. Glad you are as well. Get out there and make it a good one. Former Saints offensive lineman James Hurst in 15 minutes. Peter Burns next hour. There was a little game up on Rocky Top this weekend. Not sure if you heard. We'll talk about that in hour three. Let us begin as we do every single day. It's time to pop the top on another edition of AFR with Bud Light. Drink easy. You know... Uh, in my opinion, the uh, A sign of a great team uh, is consistency. Yes, you need great players and great coaches and, and all that sort of stuff, but all great teams have consistency. It was a hallmark of what Nick Saban did at Alabama for 17 years. It just didn't matter who they were playing, when they were playing, where they were playing, if they were coming off a big win, a, a a lot, whatever it may be, they were just, they always felt like they were the same team. And I'm not going to tell you that LSU is a great team. I, I don't believe that. But Saturday against Arkansas was a really big step in the right direction for LSU as a team and as a program. This was, like we talked about all week, a very, very obvious let down spot for LSU. I mean, there are sports bettors that even call it the field storm fade. If a team wins a game, their fans rush the field, bet against them the next week because they're going to have an emotional letdown. It's natural. LSU beats Ole Miss. They got to go on the road in conference play against an Arkansas team. It's a pretty good team. Flying high because they beat Tennessee, coming off a bye, two weeks to get healthy, two weeks to prepare, all that stuff. Look, on this show, Phil Steele picked against LSU. Lee Sterling picked against LSU. Stanford Steve on College Game Day picked against LSU. Scott Van Pelt picked against LSU. Three of the six pickers on Game Day picked against LSU. A lot of people were picking against LSU because of the spot. I thought it was going to be a another tense game against Arkansas because that's what it always seems to be. And what did LSU did? They went on the road and played their best game of the season. Their most complete game of the season. Arkansas went into that game averaging 199 rush yards per game. The LSU defense held them to 38. The LSU defense, which all, how many people have I heard say, oh, they're a terrible run defense? My counter has been, ah, uh, they haven't been terrible. They've had some awful moments. The 50-yard run against Ole Miss, the 75 and 66-yard runs, against South Carolina, but those are plays where mm, bad gap fit, you miss a tackle, they're correctable. It's not like you've seen LSU just get blown off the ball and gut it, and they, they finally put it together. Arkansas had the most runs of 10 yards or more of any team in the SEC. They had one on Saturday night, a 13-yard run, by the way, that ended in a fumble. Shout out Greg Penn. They had 277 yards of total offense. Your defense played amazing. LSU found its running game. 
36 rushes, 35 passes. You ran it 36 times for 160 yards on Saturday night against Arkansas. Oh, by the way, you never trailed. You took the opening possession. You went right down the field. You scored a touchdown. You even overcame a couple of penalties late in that drive. You had a... Uh, a That was the first half. Anyway, it's in my notes somewhere. You had an OPI and then a false start. You overcame two penalties. You had a second and 22, and Caden Durham scored from 22 yards out. Oh, by the way, on that opening drive of the game, you never faced a third down. You came out ready to play. You punched them right in the mouth. You went up 7-0. You never led. By the way, every time Arkansas put points on the board on Saturday night, you answered with points. When you were up 10 nothing, they kicked a 48-yard... I'm sorry. Uh, when they scored their first touchdown to pull within 13-7, you answered with a field goal to make it 16-7. When they kicked a 51-yard uh, field goal to start the second half, you went down. Forgive me, you punted after that, so you didn't score right after that, but you did later in the game. Point is, they did that again to so Ole Miss. After it was 10 nothing, they answered every possession where Ole Miss scored with points. You did it again on Saturday in the first half. Time of possession, 38-53 to 21-07. You dominated the line of scrimmage, and when you had to do it at the end of the ball game, you ripped off a 14-play, 80-yard drive, eight minutes and 22 seconds off the clock. Uh, shout out Todd Polite, the great Todd Polite out at LSU. The longest drive by time of possession for LSU since the Ole Miss game in 2014. Remember the drive that LSU had at the end of the game to go win it, and the only pass they threw on that drive was the game-winning touchdown pass when they won 10-7? to that's the last time LSU had a drive as long as that one in Fayetteville on Saturday night. When you're going to run it, you're telling them you're going to run it, everybody knows you're going to run it, and they still can't stop you from running it. That was phenomenal to see. You know, a few big takeaways from this ball game. The defensive improvement is real. It's, it, we know this LSU offense can move the football and score. They've done it a lot this year. But it is very clear to me now that what Brian, like piecing together the context clues they went in the opener against Southern Cal, and they played their veteran guys and guys that they thought they could count on. For example, we've talked a lot about Sage Ryan playing corner against, against Southern Cal. He played 51 snaps at boundary corner. Hasn't played there since. But they were playing Southern Cal. Instead of starting a freshman in P.J. Woodland, they didn't have Zy Alexander back yet. They said, hey, let's put a guy out there that knows what he's supposed to do. But look at what's happened since. You took the month after that, and you said, let's play a ton of guys defensively. And there were times it didn't look great. The first half against UCLA didn't look great. The second half against UCLA looked pretty darn good when you allow, what, 84 yards of offense? They took a month and said, let's play everybody and figure out who's best where. And then when we get into that stretch of seven straight SEC games, we know who our guys are. And what has happened the last two weeks? You went and held Ole Miss out of the end zone in the second half in overtime. And then you went to Arkansas and you allowed one touchdown. In the last six quarters plus overtime, you've allowed one touchdown to Ole Miss and to Arkansas. Two pretty good offenses, by the way. The defense is better. It is, I'm not telling you, outside of Witt Weeks, I don't know that there's a first-round pick on this defense. And Witt, Witt's got another year. He's playing phenomenal, obviously. But your defense at every level is being coached better. They're in the right positions. They're executing what they're supposed to be doing. You have guys in the right spot. You got two veteran safeties in Sage Ryan and Jordan Gilbert who are playing well. You got two linebackers in Whit Weeks who's playing out of his mind. Greg Penn, who's a veteran dude who knows what he's supposed to be doing. Zy Alexander, by the way, did they did not target Zy Alexander on Saturday. Zero. Zero targets to Zy Alexander's way. He essentially took away a half the field. I mean, you are playing good. De this ain't 2011, y'all, but you are playing good enough defense to beat any team you play. I'm not saying you're going to win every game you play, but you are playing good enough on the defensive side of the ball to beat any team you have remaining on the schedule. Talked about the running game, which clearly LSU has found. Caden Durham's playing hurt. Brian Kelly said on Monday, playing at 80-85%. We told you against South Alabama, he dislocated two toes. That is not an easy thing to come back from, but he's still out there. And what about the, the, the second and goal from the 22 thinking you're going to waste that amazing opening drive where a touchdown had already come off the board. No problem. Caden, Caden Durham breaks a tackle, left sideline, runs through a face mask and a horse collar, still gets in the end zone. Incredible effort by that dude. Whit Weeks playing like an All-American. A lot of people have asked, do you think Whit Weeks is going to be an All-American this year? The, the tough part is 
he didn't play a ton for the first month of the season. Now, he had a major moment against Ole Miss. 18 tackles, the forced fumble, everything in that game where everybody was watching. He had another amazing day with the, the batted ball interception. But it wasn't nobody watching LSU Arkansas except you and me. Everybody was watching Georgia-Texas. But this weekend, best game in college football this weekend is LSU-Texas A&M primetime ABC. He'll have a chance. Go put on a show in that game. And then do it again two weeks from Saturday when Alabama comes in. Oh, yeah. They're going to notice 40. We all notice. But everybody's going to notice. Two more great performances by Whit Weeks. He'll have a great opportunity. Trey Des Green had over 40 snaps on Saturday. He had one reception on three targets, caught the two-point conversion. Love the dimension that he gives you in this offense. And by the way, the one catch on three uh, targets, one of the targets was a ball that was batted at the line of scrimmage. Traders was open. He might have had two catches in that game, plus the two-point conversion. So love to see that. One of the things I always say, and you know it, winning mass deficiencies. So when you have a game like that where everything looks so good, it's so easy to ignore the bad thing, and the bad thing is the thing that everybody's talked about. It's the penalties. 11 penalties, all of them on your offense, seven procedure penalties in the first half, three against DJ Chester alone, you got to fix that. Now, the great news is in the second half, you didn't have any. Well, let me let me correct. You had one. It was at the very end of the game when the backups were in and Ori Williams had a false start. But your starters didn't have any procedure penalties in the second half. Whatever they did at halftime or told them seemed to get the focus back for the offense to wipe out those penalties. And it was everybody. I mean, it was Chester. It was Mason Taylor who had a false start. Bordelon went in and had a false Mason start. Mason Taylor! Uh, you had an illegal snap. Um, yet Aaron Anderson had a, a wide receiver had a false start. Like, that's just focus. That is not the crowd. That is not the noise. That is focus. That's all that is. When a wide receiver has a false start, that is nothing other than focus. And Aaron Anderson's awesome. I'm not criticizing Aaron Anderson. He's been amazing this year. But get the focus back when you go to College Station this week because you can't put yourself behind the six over and over again. But they were good. Uh, what a day. And I'll tell you, in the post game, Brian Kelly had, had an answer where he was asked about, you know, has this team realized now what they're playing for? And he if he gave a very candid response about, you know, what this team, it's can you play number 8? Listen to what Bron listen you don't usually get this amount of candor from a coach about the goals a team is playing for. I think that that's pretty clear that this group kind of understands that now, especially, you know, with one game uh, on the road, and then then we go on a bye week, and then three out of four at Tiger Stadium. So I think they can now sense that they have put themselves in a pretty good position. Now they got to go earn it again on the road, but there's clearly a different way that they perceive the next six weeks. And I think by by their standards, they believe they're getting better, and I believe they're getting better each and every week. And this is a good time to get better. Uh, later in the year. You don't usually hear coaches talk about the next six weeks. What do coaches talk about? The next game. The next game is the most important. Texas A&M is the most important because it's the next game. All that sort of stuff. You don't hear coaches talk big picture. At least not externally. Internally, they might. Externally, they never say it. But Brian Kelly's being pretty candid there and telling you, oh, they realize right now at this point, like, oh, everybody thought we were crap after the Southern Cal loss. But now you look up and you're one of two undefeated teams and the other one you're playing this week at their place. Go win that one, now you're cooking with grease, y'all. Four games remaining, three of them at home, all of them you should be favored. Yeah, it does look pretty good. But great teams are consistent. Can you go back up this performance against Arkansas with another one on the road against Texas A&M? If you do, you'll win that game. And you'll be 7-1 and one going into your bye, favorite at home against Alabama. And my goodness, what a scene that will be. Great performance by the Tigers. Can they build on it? They can. They're taking steps toward potentially being a great team. See if they can get there. All right, show up in every day is brought to you by Bud Light. Drink easy with the great taste of Bud Light, the official beer of AFR. Hey, y'all. Sunday, this Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Taylor Swift is in New Orleans. It's the biggest concert event ever. I don't think that's really hyperbole. Our friends over at Mockler Beverage are giving away a pair of sweet tickets to the show on Sunday. If you want to enter, go to 104.5ESPN.com. You'll see it right there on the homepage. Enter to win. You don't have to buy it. There's no, you know, 
There's no uh, purchase necessary or anything. All you got to do is go and just enter the contest. It's on the homepage at 1045ESPN.com. We'll draw for these tickets later in the week. We'll announce it on air. Again, if you want to win a pair of sweet tickets, courtesy of our friends at Mockler Beverage in their suite for the Sunday show, enter now at 1045ESPN.com. By the way, the winner and the winner's guest both must be 21 years old. Uh, there's no one under 21 allowed in the Mockler suite. So the winner and the winner's guest must be 21 years old. So do not enter if you're not 21, and your guest must be 21 as well. Good luck. Enter at 1045ESPN.com. Okay, we're a little late. James Hurst, former Saints offensive lineman next. It's AFR. AFR. Brought to you by Duplessis Builders. Hey, what a great time, y'all. If uh, now that the weather's getting a little cooler, swimming season for this season is over, if it's time to start thinking about that pool that you want for the spring, now is the time. A lot of times you might think, ah, I'll wait till after the holidays, I'll wait till the first of the year. But here's the problem with that, okay? The entire process from concept, plans, permitting, then actually doing the build out and then doing the landscaping and everything upon completion, that can be a months long process. Start now. Call Duplessis Builders, go to the website, duplessisbuilders.net, duplessisbuilders.net. Design and build your backyard paradise. Go through the process with them at their showroom where they'll hold your hand and you'll help design what finishes you want for your gorgeous pool, outdoor kitchen, the whole outdoor space. It's duplessisbuilders.net. Their showroom's on Airline Highway in Gonzales, right next to the new Rouse's. Duplessisbuilders.net. After further review, presented by Relief Windows. Windows, doors, siding, and oh yeah, they also do interior shutters. Good to welcome James Hurst back to the show. Former Saints offensive lineman doing great work now with WDSU. James, we appreciate it, man. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing awesome. Probably the vibes aren't quite as good inside the locker room. Man, take us there. I I don't know, looking back at your career in Baltimore and then with the Saints, that you ever went through a five-game losing streak. Uh, now, I guess so with, uh, with Sean Payton's final season. What's it like? Um, what's it like whenever you go through through something like this? Well, you know, it's funny. I didn't remember that I went through a five-game losing streak until uh, I was made aware of that a few days ago, Hmm. which tells me that it's something you black out of your mind. Um, But it's tough. It um, it feels like it's never gonna gonna end. Um, It's very easy for doubt, you know, to enter your mind, and you start to wonder if if you're the problem. You start to you start to honestly you start to think about your job, right? Because if if you're not winning games. They're gonna they're gonna find new guys, uh, give them chances to play, and uh, try to try to right the ship. And that's kind of the situation they're in. You know, five straight is is really really tough. I, I don't think on paper you see this team losing five straight, um, but unfortunately injuries and then uh, just seems like a bad spell on defense has them in this situation. This is something I'll, I'll follow up there in a second. But this is something that I could ask you now, as James Hurst, the analyst, that James Hurst, the player, would probably have a very different answer to. At two and five, like we're all sitting here going, realistically, with the injuries and the schedule ahead, like they're not digging out of this hole to make it to the playoffs. What would James Hurst, the player, say, and what does James Hurst, the analyst, say when you look at the the vision for the rest of this season for the Saints? Yeah, James Hurst, the player, you you have to be optimistic. Um, If you get two down and uh, that attitude becomes very contagious within the locker room, particularly being a uh, older player, a veteran player, you know, guys are looking to you whether you realize it or not. So the people in the leadership position, and, and I trust that they, they will do this. Well, I, I'll say that the, the leaders on the team in the locker room, they're great people. They they've been in this situation uh, two years ago. So, unfortunately, it's it's a little too recent. But they know what to do. They know what to say. They know how to uh, handle themselves and how to act to get everyone on board to do the things that they can do to to right the ship. Uh, Now, the analyst side of me agrees with you. It it feels like five-game losing streak, seven games in. you you still got over half the season to play. But it just doesn't feel like enough guys that they seemingly need to get healthy. It, it seems like the clock is ticking and they're not going to have enough time to get guys healthy, to get them back in the groove of playing. Because it's one thing to be healthy, but it's a whole other thing to get back on the field and produce like some of these players can produce. So 
it feels like the clock's going to run out. Unfortunately, I do still foresee um, the team getting healthy and then going on a going on a run late and making it interesting. Um, but it feels like there's just not enough not enough games left. James, I'm not being funny with this question. I have no idea if you're in playing shape, but did they call you? <laughs> they did not call me. I actually I talked to uh, Mickey and, and Ty Harley and uh, Jeff Ireland when we were in Kansas City covering that game. Um, they kind of joked about it. They said, you know, you, someone said your name at the table, uh, but we didn't call. And I, I kind of laughed at them and just said, you know, that's a good thing. It, it wouldn't have worked out. I probably would have lasted about five plays out there before I got hurt. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, it's something that definitely crossed my mind. And my agent, you know, he kept me up. He's like, don't be surprised if, if your phone rings this week. I mean, it, it, I, I wasn't being funny with the question because it's not unprecedented. And, and the injuries that they faced are what's unprecedented. And someone who's a veteran knows the system could could maybe jump back in, but you know it's it's interesting. You and I spoke when they were in the midst of of the the first two weeks when when it was going so well, and I was asking you for your perspective and context on why that wide zone and everything was was working so well. Is it James fair to say like, like is it just the injuries that have caused this amount of of a of a of a retraction from what we saw that was so historic those first two weeks? I, I, I do think most of this, now I'm particularly talking about the offense here. Let me, yes. let me be clear when I yes. say that. Uh, the defense is, is kind of another story, but the offense, I do think mostly, yes, it's, it's the injuries. Um, losing Eric McCoy, who's one of the best in the league at his position, your franchise quarterback, uh, losing him and, your backups, you know, are, are very inexperienced and, and don't bring much to the table at this point in their careers. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll say mostly it is injuries. However, the one kind of theme that I've been uh, really interested in, you know, so many people have, have talked about Taysom, right? And he missed the game. Uh, I believe it was the Eagles game that he missed, and the offense looked way different. And yes. then he came back in uh, the first half of that Cowboys game, and the offense kind of lit back up. So I think the question that, that I ask is, you know, why Taysom's a great player. I, in no way am I taking anything away from Taysom when I say this, but you can't construct an offense that is so reliant on one player, one non-quarterback player, um, to seemingly just give that spark, right? I know he lines up all over the place. He plays all these different positions, but it's like, you know, as soon as they lost Taysom, the, um, the surprise factor of the offense, the excitement kind of left the building. And then you, you know, you stack more and more of those injuries on top of that. And it's, it's just insurmountable. You know, I don't, I, I think you can replace, you know, uh, one starter, two starters, maybe three starters. Um, but when you're talking six, seven starters on one side of the ball, it doesn't matter who you're playing, what coach you have. It, it, it's too much to replace. Can I just follow up? I'm just, just to, to clarify, are you saying, and I don't know if this was like you felt the same way when you were playing a year ago, but are you saying that, that Taysom is, is too integral a part of the offense, or, or was it just more like the spark that you're talking about? Like, well, if, some of the spark, I, I think what I'm saying is the offensive scheme was too reliant on him being present. Okay. Like, okay, yeah, Taysom goes out, and sure, you're going to see a drop-off because another player is going to come in who's not a starter. They're not Taysom. However, the, the size of the drop-off that I think you saw shows that hey, we're relying maybe too much on on what he brings to the table or the kind of uncertainty that he gives to a defense. And you don't feel it was like that last year when you were in that offense? Well, it didn't feel like it because the way that they've used Taysom this year um, is is even more variable than, than I played when I was with him. Um, he, You know, one play, he's fullback. Next play, he's tight end. Then he's quarterback. Then he's running back. It's like they're moving him over all over at, at such a high rate that it is a huge advantage for the offense because the, the defense can't possibly um, check yeah. and, and you know know any adjustments because they don't know what position he's playing when he comes out of the huddle. Dude, I could talk to you for like five hours straight. Um, <laughs> James Herb, I'm not going to keep you just for maybe a couple more minutes. Uh, James Hurst, former Saint, of course, doing great work with WDSU now. You did mention, and by the way, I agree with you on the offense. Like, there's two. You can't overcome all of the injuries on offense. For me, the bigger thing is, man, this defense, which under Dennis Allen has been so good for so long, has just come apart at the seams. They're literally dead last in the NFL. So what do you see? What has happened there? 
the, the obvious one um, is tackling. Now, I can't really explain to you why. Um, you know, the the many of the same players are, are still the starters there, um, but the tackling has to get fixed first and foremost. Too many missed tackles, and it seems like they're in big situations, third down conversions, um, open field one-on-one situations where there's there's so many more yards after the missed tackle. So that's got to that's gotta be fixed. And then 1B is the rushing defense. Um, Dennis Allen, you know, he coaches in a two-high safety defense. That's, that's what they like to be in. They like to play man-to-man. So the, the corners in the secondary, they're not able to support the run um, as, as easily as if they were in zone where all eyes are on, are on the ball at all times, right? So um, they, they, they rely on the defensive line and the linebackers, and at times, a down safety to come in and, and help stop the run. But if they can't do that, they can't be in the defenses that they know best, the defenses that they play best. And it just seems like it's taken them completely out of who they are as a defense. And, and until they figure out how to keep, you know, the rushing game in check, they're, they're not going to be the defense that they're designed to be. Yeah. Um, James Hurst, before I let you go, uh, Dennis Allen did announce that if, if Derek Hart isn't available this week, that they they will stick with, Spencer Rattler, uh, how do you feel about that? Should Rattler or do they give Jake Hayner a shot with you know the the, the ten days to prepare? Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting situation. Uh, to be honest, I was very surprised that Rattler got the got the nod um, two weeks ago. You knew he was going to be going in back to back short weeks as a rookie with no real experience, and uh, you know they decided to name him the starter. And to be honest. He, he's done some things that have been very impressive. Um, again, like we've talked about, he's battling uphill. Um, his supporting cast is really tough. In order for him to have some success, you know, they're going to have to run the ball effectively. They're going to have to get their play action game going. And then you lose Shahid, who's really, you know, taking the top off the defense. It's, it's just going to be super tough for him. Um, but, but giving him the nod again, I'm okay with that. I think from a confidence standpoint, um, you're giving him a real shot. You know, it's not like, okay, he got a short week, then he got a Thursday game. Well, that's, that's you know, nearly impossible as a rookie to, to grasp the game plan in time to be able to go out and learn from your mistakes and then go execute well. So I'm excited to see him with 10 days. Um, I think three games is a good stretch. I think the team will have a, a decent idea of what they're working with after they see this. Um, but, but, you know, Jake made it interesting going in and, and driving down for the touchdown. Um, late in that last game so uh, you know I don't know again I'm just it was so surprising um, you know Jake being the second quarterback it, I think it speaks a lot it speaks a lot about what they thought of Rattler um, when they kind of bumped him above Hainer uh, for these starts here. James Hurst guy played a decade in the league uh, four seasons in New Orleans now doing work at WDSU great stuff man I always appreciate your time in the chat and the inside man thank you for making time today. Yeah, absolutely thanks so much. Of course it's our pleasure uh, it's after for God, that was good. His answer about Taysom was amazing. I would never have thought that. It's a perspective you get when a guy, especially so like played so long, but also is so close to his playing days that still knows so many of the players and the concepts and can give you that. Hey, that was fantastic. Um, all right, it's after further review brought to you by South Point Volkswagen, SouthpointVW.com. New and certified pre-owned in Baton Rouge and online at SouthpointVW.com, SouthpointVW.com. Y'all. If it's on the lot, it's online. Go shop their entire inventory at southpointvw.com. That's South Point Volkswagen, Louisiana's largest volume Volkswagen dealer. If you're in the market for a new vehicle or think you might be soon, shop them online. Remember, the end of the month is always the best time to buy a vehicle because i got to move inventory. It's a great time to do it right now at South Point Volkswagen. Southpointvw.com, South Point Volkswagen. What's your direction? Okay, um, around the SEC... We'll get to what we learned. Muse, Paulie, and I would tell you on Thursday three things we're watching. We come back on Monday, do what we learned. Peter Burns in one hour from right now. Oh, there was a – Muse, has my uh, dry cleaning gotten here yet, by the way? Uh, not yet. We're waiting no. on that still. Okay. Yeah. My dry cleaning isn't here? It's not in yet. Okay. I'm, you know, I'm waiting on something. I, I, yeah, I do. I, I've been assured that it will be here before the end of the show. Okay. It's so just maybe not here like, yet. Maybe like hour three you think it might Potentially, be Potentially, yeah. Okay. Safe bet. Traffic. I mean, there's some traffic yeah, out there, man. It's traffic. Monday. Yes. Oh, it's a good point. Very yeah. good point, yeah. So my dry cleaning should be here, we think, before the end of the show, probably yeah. in the third hour, maybe? Yeah, that's Got what I'm it. thinking. Okay. I need my dry cleaning before the end of the show. We'll get it. Got it. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, it's AFR. 
AFR. Brought to you by Glow Resources, G-L-O, glowresources.com. They are complete employer solutions. That's Glow Resources. If you're a business owner, HR manager, hiring manager, operations manager, if you're in charge of finding the right people for your business and you keep struggling to find people that are efficient, that show up on time, do the job they're supposed to do, that are actually qualified, either with the skill set or the physical ability to do the job that you need, Glow Resources can help. They cast a wide net through all of their many different networks to find the right people. Again, at Glow Resources, they're not a temp staffing agency. So they don't want, like if you're looking for work, don't call Glow. They deal with you, the business owner. They work with you to find the right people for your business. And that's skilled blue collar labor. That's their professional placement division that handles basically any type of white collar office job, even management. It's Glow Resources. G-L-O. GlowResources.com. After further review, presented by Relief Windows. Windows, doors, siding, and oh yeah, they also do interior shutters. Texas has been fined a quarter million dollars. They've apologized to Georgia and officials for their fan behavior. If you weren't watching, uh, in um, there was a there was a controversial pass interference call. Uh, Georgia was on offense. They throw an interception. It flagged pass interference. Uh, Texas got the interception. They run it down uh, deep in Georgia territory. They flag Texas for PI. Fans start pelting the field with trash uh, bottles, mostly from the student section. Steve Sarkeesian had to, to come out onto the field near the student section and wave his hands as if to say stop. Um, the um, uh, Ultimately, the officials after this would confer and then overturn the call and let the interception stand. And a lot of people looked at it and said, so basically the precedent you're setting here is that um, if you throw stuff on the field and boo loudly and create a scene, you're going to affect the officials to to overturn their call. In any event, um, Texas was fine, like the 250 matters. I mean, 250 million. They wouldn't even blink an eye at that. 250,000. Anyway, um, the SEC also said they would not suspend alcohol sale privileges for Texas, but they reserved the right to do so if the requirements they put in place are not met. So something worth watching. It was an ugly scene. We saw similar stuff um, at Ole Miss, at Tennessee, against Ole Miss. And you remember, like, Lane Kiffin almost got hit with a golf ball a few years ago there at uh, at Knoxville. Yeah, some guy threw mustard on the field. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> mustard bottle. bottle of mustard. <laughs> that was so I shouldn't good. laugh. I shouldn't laugh. He did throw a bottle of mustard. Uh, someone get him an NIL deal. Anyway, um, ugly scene, but uh, Georgia prevailed, of course, 30-15, to 15, handing Texas their first loss. All right, we're ready by Shaw Bills Tire and Auto Service. We'll go around the SEC in just a quick second. ShawBillsTire.com, ShawBillsTire.com. Hitting the road to College Station this weekend. You need new tires? Go to Shaw Bills. Hitting the road to College Station this weekend. You need your oil changed? Go to Shaw Bills. Hitting the road this weekend, going to College Station. That check engine light's on? Go to Shaw Bills. Whatever it may be. ShawBillsTire.com. Schedule your service. Shop tires. It's all there. And, of course, we'll continue reminding you. Miss Beth Barron over at Shaw Bills, named by Modern Tire the dealer of the year, national award, national recognition of all the tire dealers in the country. Miss Beth Barron at Shaw Bills named the national, uh, the modern dealer, excuse me, modern tire national dealer of the year. Congrats, Miss Beth Barron and everyone over at Shaw Bills, where we keep you rolling. Okay, do it every day about this time. Let's go around the SEC. Around the SEC, bringing you the biggest news from the nation's best conference, the Texas Longhorns. Despite benching Quinn Ewers for Arch Manning before halftime. Steve Sarkeesian said after the game, there is no quarterback competition. Quinn Ewers is still the starter. They went to Arch to see if he can give him a spark there before half. But still, the uh, calls and the convos are going to get louder. Certainly expect Ewers to be back uh, under center. Ewers was 6 of 12 for 17 yards and a pick when he was benched. The Oklahoma Sooners. Oklahoma's fired offensive coordinator Seth Luttrell. It was reported first by our guys over at Sooner Scoop. It's been confirmed by Oklahoma. Um, he was the Luttrell was the North Texas head coach. Was promoted from an analyst role last offseason by Brent Venables when Jeff Levy left to become the head coach at Mississippi State. But Jackson Arnold, Michael Hawkins have struggled. Oklahoma 128th in the country in total offense. Co-offense coordinator Joe John Finley takes over the play-calling duties. 
The Alabama Crimson Tide. Tide have turned to Bray Hubbard with starting safety Keon Sab set to miss time for a pretty terrible Alabama defense, losing a starter in the secondary. Probably not a great thing. Sab started the game against Tennessee, played 30 snaps, left the game, has been shut down for the rest of the contest. Uh, he was the starting safety alongside of Malachi Moore. So sophomore Bray Hubbard will go in 6'2", 204-pounder, was second on the team in tackles before he was injured. The Florida Gators. Four-star defensive lineman Joseph Bachu has decommitted from Florida. He's out of Logansville, Georgia. That's a uh, it's a football factory there. 6'4", 280-pounder, uh, number 379 overall prospect for 2025. Head off for some Bama, Auburn, Georgia, LSU, Tennessee. We'll see where he lands for Florida now. Just 11 commits for 2025. The Tennessee Volunteers. And Tennessee picked up a commitment for 2026. Big-time offensive tackle Braden Anderson out of the Atlanta area from North Cobb. Uh, committed to Tennessee, had more than a dozen offers. He was there for the Tennessee win over Alabama. I'd imagine that might be pretty uh, impactful for a young person. Had offers from Bama, Georgia, Georgia Tech, Miami, a whole bunch of others. 6'5", 335. He's the number 25 interior offensive lineman in the class of 2026. Okay, there you have it. That is around the SEC. Our Monday shows are brought to you by Relief Windows and ReliefWindows.com. Windows door siding. Oh, yeah. They do indoor shutters as well. It's Relief Windows and ReliefWindows.com. Okay, y'all. We'll knock out our final break here of hour number one. When we come back uh, every Thursday, Muse, Polly, and I, I tell you three things we're keeping an eye on. We call it what to watch. And then we come back on Monday and look at how it all went. We call it what we learned. We'll do that next to wrap up hour number one. It's AFR. AFR. Y'all, it's not too late to give our friends over at Action Industries a shout. If you're a welder, a crane operator, a pipe fitter, a boiler maker, Action Industries, they've got two month-long turnarounds coming up. And they've been in this hard recruitment uh, cycle now. They need 100 to 120 people for to work these turnarounds. Working 712s. Four to five week turnarounds, all of the work local to Greater Baton Rouge. And the great news is you get on with Action Industries. They've got a year long project that they were just awarded that's going to start soon as well. So be on board for that as well. Stable work for a longer period of time. It's Action Industries. Two ways you can apply online or in person. Online, I'll give you the website Action i n d i n c dot com. That's Action Industries Incorporated. Action i n d i n c dot com, or apply in person at their Geismar office on Highway Thirty. Just go in and ask for Zach. It's Action Industries, proud partner of LSU Athletics. After further review, presented by Relief Windows, windows, doors, siding, and oh yeah, they also do interior shutters. Hey Muse. Yeah. Any word on my dry cleaning yet? Yet. Yeah. Five o'clock. Huh. Are we positive? It's, it's what, I, what I heard. Yeah, that, that it should be here for five o'clock. So we um, we do a show that a lot of people watch or listen to on demand. So we try to avoid <laughs> saying specific times. So uh, that would be hour three. Yeah, the top of hour number three. Oh, okay. Okay. Keep an eye on it. Let me know if there's any uh, issues, traffic, anything like that, that might alter uh, alter our plans. Just want to make sure my dry cleaning gets here before the end of the show today. We'll definitely have it before the end of the show today. Don't make promises you can't keep, Muse. I'm positive. Mm. I'll, I'll, I'll see to it. Okay. I mean, if we need to get the dry cleaning van, like a police escort or something... Just got to have my dry clean in here before the end of the show. It's important. You just let me know, all right? I will. Make sure you keep me posted. Don't don't drop the ball on this, Muse. Not going to. I need my dry clean in here before yeah. the end of the show today. All right. Um, hope you had a great weekend. The great thing is LSU had a really nice win. And the Saints couldn't root for us on Sunday. That's awesome. Saints are a six-and-a-half-point underdog out in L.A. against the Chargers this week. Who boy, uh, Dennis Allen did meet with reporters. Uh, we will get to some Saints talk later. Uh, Alvin Kamara debunked trade rumors. We'll get to that here in about 30 minutes from right now. Saints did work out a wide receiver on Monday. Uh, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, a veteran. I mean, I won a Super Bowl with the Chiefs, so we'll get into that 
um, a little bit later in the show as well. Right now, though, uh, every Thursday, Muse Pauly and I tell you three things we're keeping an eye on for the football weekend. We call it what to watch. We come back on Monday, tell you what happened, so we call it what we learned. We watched. Now, let's review. All right, Muse, uh, get us started over there. Uh, so, I mean, one of the first things we were watching was Georgia Tech and Notre Dame. It was an interesting one because it could have been maybe a trip stop spot for Notre Dame. Georgia Tech's a great underdog. Then Friday afternoon, Haynes King was ruled out, and the game really just kind of lost all of its shine. I will say, the backup started 9 for 9. Let a touchdown drive. They had an interception. They were up 7 to nothing, and then the second quarter started, and, and the game started. Yeah, Phil Steele gave us that pick when it was 9 and a half. Notre yeah. Dame 9 and a half. It went up to 13 and a half, I believe. Still laid it. Still covered. Rocky yeah. Chair. Easy. Pauly? I was watching Cam Ward versus Louisville and his Heisman odds. So if you like the uh, points, this was your game. Yeah. Cam Ward, 319, four touchdowns, 29 yards on the ground. Paul, you need to go closer to the mic. You need to put him louder. Either way. You go ahead. Sorry. Uh, so entered in the Better. game, his Heisman odds, he was around fourth or fifth best odds. Right now, he's either the favorite or number two behind Aston Genty. Miami 7-0, best start since 2017. I was keeping an eye on Travis Hunter. Again, Genty didn't play this weekend. So Hunter and, and uh, Colorado had a big game on the road against Arizona. And what Paulie just alluded to there, we've talked a lot about Genty and Hunter. They've kind of been the, the favorite co-favorites for the Heisman. Even despite a lopsided win for Colorado, 34-7 to was the final. Um, Travis Hunter's Eisman odds actually lengthened. He went from 12 to 1 to 20 to 1. You get all the odds up at LouisianaSports.net right now if you want to see him. That's the problem. That's why it's so hard. As you all, I mean, I'm not telling you something you don't know, but as great as Hunter is, he might be the best player in college football. It's so hard to win the Heisman because it's so hard to guarantee you stockpile statistics, which is what lazy people that vote on this thing look for. So it's going to be very difficult for him to win it. Despite a big win, Hunter's Heisman odds actually got longer. Georgia and Texas, and more specifically the start Georgia would get off to. Woo! Carson Beck was rough in that game against Te uh, Alabama in the opener. Excuse me, uh, earlier in the year. He was pretty rough early on in this one, too. Threw two interceptions in the first quarter. Georgia did not get off to a fast start. The only difference is the Georgia defense looked like the Georgia defense, so it didn't really matter. Forced a fumble, mm. short field, scored a touchdown in the first quarter, and never looked back from oh. there. So Georgia's, Georgia's still good? Yes, oh, yes. Really? Carson Beck, though. Georgia's still good. That's rough in two big games, man. <laughs> no three, doubt. three picks again here. And despite three picks, Georgia yeah. double-digit win on the road they against ran, the number one team. They the ran country? the ball and smothered uh, out an offense. Oh, George, so Georgia's still really good? Still really oh, good. Oh, stunned. I'm not sure who possibly could have seen could have seen that coming. <clears throat> I was watching the Lions-Vikings. The Lions knocked off the previously undefeated Vikings on a 44-yard field goal from Jake Bates. How about that Jameer Gibbs rushed for 116, two touchdowns. Justin Jefferson did by the end zone for the Vikings. Uh, both Detroit and Minnesota are now 5-1. and one. The whole NFC North above 500 right now. As a Minnesota bettor, I was not super thrilled yeah, with the way that yeah, it's stunk. Good day, though, for uh, Jimmy Outs football yeah. Sunday. But they were up 10 nothing at one point. Well, that was the very beginning of the I don't game. care. I, I, that lead evaporated very quickly. It was 10 nothing in the first quarter, and it evaporated very quickly. Uh, I told you last week I was looking at Oklahoma, South Carolina. And I, the way I said it on Friday was, this isn't the game on the marquee that anyone's really interested in, but my goodness, did this end up being very telling. So much so that Oklahoma fired Seth Luttrell, their offensive coordinator, as a result of this game. They were bludgeoned on their home field by a mid-South Carolina team, which is two and... Now, after the win, South Carolina is four and three overall, two and three in the SEC. Y'all... 35 to 9. This was never competitive. South Carolina got up 21 to nothing in the first quarter. Two defensive touchdowns. Oklahoma, like, celebrate all them Big 12 championships, y'all. Because when you start getting run by mid SEC teams on your home field, brother, this ain't the Big 12 anymore, dog. Chiefs Niners Super Bowl rematch. Brock mm. Purdy's not good. Uh, I think we all kind of knew that, but it just not happened. Good. Yeah. Come on. Three interceptions yesterday, man. He was he was bad. No, he was he bad was yesterday. Bad. We can't say he he's not bad. Good. He was and, bad yesterday. Uh, they're all. Can we say he's not good? It's it's getting easier, man. I think, because of that system. You've seen so many quarterbacks be proven to not be good in the NFL and be good in that system. Anyway, the Chiefs ran the ball down their throat. They won the game. 
The Packers knocked off the Texans in a back and forth game that had seven lead changes. CJ Stroud was just 10 of 21, career low 86 passing yards. He was sacked four times. Josh Jacobs, he got his first career touchdown reception. Yeah, a bit. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, and finally, kind of mine was the Monday Night Football doubleheader. You have the first ever Monday Night Football game on Plus, streaming yeah. only. That's the one uh, that's the Chargers Cardinals. The the better one, I think, that we're all keeping an eye on is Ravens Bucks, obviously, because of the uh, the Bucks involvement there. And, of course, Lamar Jackson. The Bucks lose this game. It actually gives the Saints more incentive to maybe try to keep. I don't want to say try to keep winning, but the front office less incentive to be sellers at the trade deadline. Anyway, keep an eye on it tonight. Ravens, Bucks, Chargers, Cardinals. All right, hour number two, staring you straight in the face. Monday's AFR presented by Relief Windows. We'll run through some PFF grades for LSU. AFR. Supper Club closed Sunday, Monday, but they're back open on Tuesday with an eye toward Thursday night. I keep telling y'all, Thursday night, y'all make plans to be at Supper Club this Thursday if you haven't been yet or if you've been but you haven't been on Thursday. A lot of the regulars at Supper Club loved back in the summer when Supper Club redid their menu and they added new items. There's always people who come in looking for, okay, what's new? What's chef cooking up? Well, on Thursday, this is a Thursday-only special. It's the 21-day dry-aged tomahawk bone-in ribeye served as prime rib, sliced table side. Y'all, it is immaculate. You've got to try it. Thursdays only. At Supper Club, they also do their Thursday wine feature at Supper Club where they bust open a premium bottle, sell it by the ounce, so you can try something that you may otherwise never buy a bottle of. It's Thursdays at Supper Club. Book your reservation, supperclubbtr.com, supperclubbtr.com.